channel everyone where every day is a good day to go shooting and today we're taking aim at something special our latest and greatest 556 pistol AR build this build has caused quite a stir in the comments on this channel and for good reason it's a budget-friendly build that will make your wallet and your trigger finger happy so if you're looking for some inspiration for your next pistol AR build strap in and grab a drink because we're gonna be going over this pistol AR from top to bottom before we begin this review, this firearm is indeed unloaded and clear. So for this review, I figured we would start with the back and then work our way up. First up, we have the SB Tactical SBA3 Brace. This is a popular choice among pistol AR builders and shooters due to its comfortable and adjustable design. It features five adjustable positions and is made out of a durable polymer making it a lightweight and easy to handle option. We already did an in-depth review on this in another video, so we're not gonna go too in detail about the brace. One negative thing I do wanna mention about this brace is the stability of the split. The split on this brace has this issue where it'll buckle in on itself very easily, even just in storage. Moving on to the buffer tube, it is a Strike Industries Advanced Receiver Extension. It is a seven position mil spec buffer tube that will fit onto any standard AR-15 receiver. One thing to note is when you're using an SBA3 brace with this specific buffer tube, you're gonna experience a bit of shake and wobble to the brace when it's connected to this buffer tube. But that's really just me being picky. It doesn't really affect the function all that much. And overall, it looks great. Up next, we have the Magpul MOE Pistol Grip. Now this grip has a very ergonomic design and features a textured surface that provides a secure, non-slip hold even when your hands are wet or sweaty. It also has this cool little storage compartment on the bottom to keep some goodies like spare ammo or snacks hidden away. Hey, do you have any snacks? <laughs> The upper and lower receivers are both forged from 7075 T6 aluminum and feature a durable, hard coat anodized finish. In terms of build quality, both the upper and lower are very well made and should provide a solid foundation for your AR-15 build. Besides that, there's nothing really too special about this receiver set. The fire control group used is also from PSA and is their enhanced polished trigger and hammer model. It's a solid choice for those looking for a basic trigger, but it really isn't anything special. It'll be getting swapped out with a Geisley Super Dynamic Combat Trigger in the near future. Moving on, we have the Strike Industries Cobra Trigger Guard. This unique trigger guard is made of a durable aluminum and features a unique Cobra-shaped design. It's very easy to install and provides a place to rest your finger if you have smaller hands. It'll also help with your reloads a little bit with this extended angled lip right here. But to be perfectly honest, I just liked the way it looked, so I purchased it. And here come the Globo Gym Purple Cobras. Man. Up next, we have the safety selector and takedown pins, which are both made by Timber Creek Outdoors. This safety selector is made out of aluminum and features a red anodized finish. It is indeed ambidextrous with one side having a longer throw arm, which allows for easy operation for both right and left-handed shooters, as well as having the ability to use a 90 degree or a 45 degree throw. The takedown pins are also made out of aluminum and feature the same red anodized finish. They were quite easy to install and provide a secure and reliable hold for your upper and lower receiver. Now let's talk about the charging handle. This is a Strike Industries extended latch charging handle. It is a T6 7075 forged hard anodized charging handle. It features a larger aluminum latch that functions with ease in all conditions. But to be honest, I will be replacing this charging handle with a Radian Raptor SD once my suppressor gets out of ATF jail. 
Next up, we have the Bolt Carrier Group. The PSA 556 Nitride Full Auto BCG is a standard and reliable choice. The 9310 steel bolt has proven itself through thousands of rounds without fail. And the best part about it is you can often find this budget-friendly BCG on sale for just $70. Now, onto one of my personal favorite parts about this rifle, the optic setup. I've paired up an EOTech XPS 2-0 with a Sig Sauer Juliet Micro three times. The XPS 2 is a compact and lightweight holographic sight with an impressive field of view and versatile brightness settings. And I'll say, if you have an astigmatism, this holographic sight is an absolute game changer, especially if you plan on magnifying it. It's water, shock, and fog proof, so you can use it in any weather condition. Even if you face plant into some rocks and break the glass, the optic will still work. I will be doing a deep dive into this site in an upcoming video, so make sure you subscribe for that. Just keep in mind though, this optic isn't really budget friendly, with an MSRP of over $500. So if you're looking for something more affordable, I'd recommend pairing a Romeo 5 with the Juliet 3 times instead. Now moving on to the Juliet three times. We've talked about it extensively in a recent video, but just in case you missed it, let me give you the TLDR. The Juliet is a lightweight micro three times magnifier that gives you a crisp and clear sight picture. It's easy to adjust with a simple push of a button and has an eye relief of 64 millimeters. Now that we've finished with the back end of the rifle, let's move on to the front end. First up would be the Strike Industries Strike 10 inch handguard, which is made out of aircraft grade aluminum and has a black anodized finish. This handguard is the epitome of sleek and lightweight, weighing in at just 12.7 ounces. It features a free floating design, providing a comfortable and secure grip. It has a couple Picatinny rail sections on the top and M lock attachment points on all sides. It also has an ambidextrous QD sling point. The inner diameter of this handguard is 1.57 inches. So, depending on the diameter of your suppressor, you could use this handguard to hide the attachment point of your suppressor, giving your build a truly unique look. But wait! There's more! Hanging out under the handguard is the Strike Industries Link Grip. It's made out of 6061 T6 aluminum, making it super durable and lightweight, weighing in at just 1.7 ounces. We have also done an in-depth review of this AFG, so make sure you check it out for more information. Mounted to the side of the gun, we have the Olight Odin Mini GL with a pressure pad affixed to the top. This 1000 lumen light packs a serious punch. It has three operation modes, allowing you to switch between white light only, GL only, and the white light with GL beam combined by twisting the selector ring on the front of the light. The pressure pad itself has two options, low power and high power. The light has a max runtime of about 215 minutes and a max throw of 180 meters. The battery used is a 2040 MAH18500 battery which is charged via a magnetic cord that affixes to the back here. To be honest, I'm a huge fan of Olight brand products, so I'm very happy with my purchase. Up next would be one of the more important parts of the build, the barrel. It is a 10.5 inch nitride barrel with a one in seven twist rate, chambered in 5.56 and made out of 4150V steel and is paired up with PSA's low profile gas block. I have put at least a couple thousand rounds through this barrel and I have no complaints. I'm a full supporter of PSA barrels and have used them in many of my budget builds so far. Last but not least would be the muzzle brake blast shield combo. I have a Silencer Co. ASR 3 port muzzle brake paired up with a Silencer Co. ASR blast shield. The main point of me getting this muzzle brake was because of the ASR attachment system, which allows you to quickly attach and detach a suppressor. 
I was surprised at how well this muzzle brake performed when it comes to the reducing felt recoil and the muzzle climb. However, this does come at a cost because when you're using it without a blast shield, you and the people in the bay next to you will drastically feel the concussion produced by this brake. I highly recommend purchasing the Silencer Co. ASR blast shield to alleviate the concussion produced. Instead of directing the gases to the left and right, the blast shield redirects the gases forward. This does come with a very slight reduction to the muzzle brake's effectiveness, but not in a significant way at all. You also will no longer receive death stares from the first time shooters at the range, so that's a plus. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the way this build came out. It shoots fantastic and has given me zero issues so far. If you were to replace the EOTech with a Romeo 5, it would come out to around $1,000 to $1,200 to build this entire pistol AR. And that's depending if you took advantage of sales or not. There are also a few cosmetic parts that you could save money on, but personally, aesthetically customizing my builds is one of my favorite parts about building a firearm. And that's all we have for this one, everyone. Thanks for sticking around for the whole video. We really appreciate you. We hope you found this video to be informative in your shopping decisions for your future build. If you have any questions or comments about products used in this video, feel free to comment and we'll be happily to respond. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our gun reviews and gun related content. And as always, everyone, stay safe and have fun shooting. <laughs>